So I'm Rachel. I'll give you guys a little background on myself so you can kind of get the mindset that I'm coming from before I go into this highly technical topic. Um, so I actually am just coming straight out of working for a utility in the energy efficiency and demand management department. Um, so I kind of have a little bit of like a businessy perspective on things here um, and also um, used to do like a bunch of different types of energy um, as a consultant. So I've been in like solar, energy efficiency, nuclear power. Um, so we will dive into this, which is called optimizing solar farm site selection using remote sensing technology. And I will break this down for you in a way that makes it a little bit more approachable. Um, so to start with the objectives, essentially the idea is to try and analyze the Atacama Desert using satellite imagery and then map it out using these images and analyze it in something called a remote sensing software and then see how this can be used in order to help optimize the process of selecting solar farm locations um, by reducing costs and also increasing the output of energy that's created from solar panels. Um, and this aligns really well with Chile's regulatory goal of um, Energy 2050, which is to essentially convert 70% of power generated in country to renewable energy. Um, and also the Atacama is very ideal for solar power because it has the highest incoming solar radiation in the world um, and is very dry and has low cloud cover. So um, just to go into the background of what some of this means, so I just kind of said <laughs> geographically, Atacama, really good for solar panels. There's a lot of projects popping up there right now. Um, and politically, Energy 2050. Um, all, Chile's already kind of moving in the direction of switching over to renewables. Um, I heard recently they kind of have uh, pledged to stop uh, production of power through coal. Um, and then from a technical perspective, so what is remote sensing? Just broadly, remote sensing means collecting data remotely. So you're studying a site um, without actually coming into physical contact with that object or study area. Um, and the software that I'll be using does some really cool things. Uh, it's called Erdos Imagine, and basically it takes free satellite imagery that can be collected from like NASA uh, through the Landsat satellite or from the European Space Agency, which has Copernicus Sentinel-2 floating up there. Um, <laughs> and it takes those images and it puts it into the software and you can basically see all these characteristics about the landscape. So you can see things like vegetation cover, slope, um, and the way it does this, uh, there's two types of remote sensing. There's active and passive. So essentially it's measuring wavelengths of energy that are emitted from the ground or reflected off the ground, I guess I should say. Um, and active remote sensing sends energy to the ground and then recollects the wavelength that bounced back and then passive, it just kind of collects energy from the sun that's bouncing back. And then what you can do with that is based on the signature wavelength, you can figure out what's on the ground. So it's pretty cool. Um, I had a professor at Georgetown who worked at NASA, and he was showing us some pretty scary images of like little registration stickers on cars from, that were taken all the way from outer space. Like, yeah, it's, it's insane. So, um, and then the other terminology I just wanted to mention, uh, solar farm, there are no animals involved. It's just a big area of solar panels. Um, it's also called a PV power plant, like a photovoltaic power plant or like a PV system. Um, yeah, cool. So let's go into the project itself. So I'm just gonna kind of break this down by phases and I think it'll kind of give some more insight into how this could work. Um, so the first phase of the project um, will basically just be to research the current selection processes that are used when trying to pick a site for a solar farm. Um, and then to try and quantify some of the costs and benefits that are associated with that. Um, things like how long does it take to get a return on an investment? Um, and you know, how do they actually use data sets to choose these sites? How much do they have to go out into the field to do this kind of thing? And then there's a, gonna be a lot of communicating with um, people in the Chilean um, Department of Energy, uh, people at the utility companies, people in different organizations um, about specific Chilean regulation associated with building solar panels in the desert. Um, there's a lot more different types of restrictions than you might expect out in a desert. Things like land ownership, um, there's a big observatory out in the desert and you can't build within a certain radius of that because it can um, kind of pollute the clear access that the observatory has to space, things like that. 
Um, so once that is done, the idea will be to actually start looking at satellite images and putting them into the remote sensing software and trying to map out the desert and pick areas that could be really good for solar farm sites. Um, so in order to do this, essentially um, I'll be picking like the characteristics that I found in phase one of the project that are really important for building solar farm sites. So like you probably don't want an area that is very sloped. Like you, it depends on the access of the solar panel, but like sometimes if you have a flat area, it'll be a lot cheaper to build there. So why would you go and level the ground out when you can just use this kind of software to pick an area that's already flat? Um, so things like that. Um, and then hopefully by overlaying all these different types of images, you'll be able to pick an, like an area that's ideal for a solar farm site. So I did a mini version of this project um, with California, just as an example, see if it kind of works. Um, and these are some sample images. They look really confusing, but they're not that bad, I promise. Um, so the satellite image there is something that you can just get for free off the internet. Um, that is called a multispectral image. And it's actually a vegetation analysis. So anywhere that you see red is really high in vegetation and anywhere that it's like white is very low in vegetation and then the black area in the center is water um, and then if you kind of look I'm just stand up here so see this like little area here there's a little like section there that's actually right here in the image so this is like a zoomed in slightly larger version of that image um, but in analysis form so basically this is a stack of like four different types of images so you have like the green area is protected land, so you can't build on that. Um, the brown area is the reflection of the vegetation and um, purple is slope. And then you have the blue squares, which are incoming solar radiation. So you kind of pick those areas where all those things overlap. And then I put a tiny little red dot, it's kind of hard to see, but like that would be an example of a good area that's, that can be used for solar. And it's actually a lot bigger than you think. Like you can fit um, like a utility scale plant, which is something that you could feed into the grid directly, and then that can be transported to other customers. All right, so phase three um, would be what I call ground truthing, and it's not just what I call it, a lot of people call it that. Um, <laughs> so basically when you're doing remote sensing, um, you are looking at things remotely. The images might be from a few years ago. Um, it depends on like how much data is available. Luckily, with the Atacama Desert, the surface is actually probably the most similar thing we have on Earth to Mars. So the space agencies like to photograph it and do kind of like space tests out there. So there's a lot of images and there's very low cloud cover, which means the satellites get really clear pictures. So hopefully this won't be too much of an issue. Um, but you know, you still have to go out into the desert and actually make sure these sites that you're identifying match what you're finding remotely. So that will be me wandering around the desert for a little while. Um, and then the next phase would be to try and relook at those costs and benefits that I tried to quantify in phase one and see how using a process like this can make an impact on a cost benefit analysis. Um, so basically, you know, maybe this is reducing costs. Maybe you don't have to go out into the field as much to actually scout out locations. Maybe it reduces the amount of construction that needs to be done in the field. Um, maybe based on like overlaying data sets of incoming solar radiation, you can increase the generation that's being outputted. Um, and then I would like to speak with people in the industry again and see how this might fit into something at a utility that they could use or potentially with like solar developers. So, this is going to require input from several different resources. Um, so Federico Santa Maria is very strong in the electronics and electrical engineering fields. Um, and I'll be working with a professor uh, named Dr. Samir Koro, a really smart guy, and he is, uh, specializes in electrical engineering and also happens to be one of the leads on CERC Chile, which is uh, the Solar Energy Regulatory Center or sorry, Solar Energy Research Center in Chile. Um, and he focuses specifically on transmission. So I think he can add a lot of like valuable input into how close things like this need to be to the grid, how to interconnect. Um, and he can obviously help put me in contact hopefully with more people at CERC. And then also within the university, there's the Advanced Center for Electrical and Electronic Engineering, AC3E. Um, and they have a lot of insight into this kind of thing. Um, people are using 
data sets to help map out where you can put electrical electric vehicle charging stations, but they're not doing it with like the satellite data. They're doing it more with things like GIS, um, which is geographic information systems. And so hopefully they kind of have a really good understanding of some of the regulatory restrictions that are out there on Chilean land. So yeah, that's that's it. Any <laughs> any questions? <laughs> In terms of cost effectiveness, I know you talked about uh, if there's a certain slope, it may not be considered due to the increased cost. But have, are there farms that can be built in terms of uh, the solar panels being built, kind of like at incremental heights, that would kind of change the perspective of that? Yeah, it, it really depends on like the type of solar panel that's being used. Um, there's a lot of different types.